Hey guys, it's Eric Roberts from Worship the King. Welcome. Uh, this is a follow-up video about getting good tone on the acoustic guitar and how to do it if you're on stage. So if you let's say you've already watched the video. If you haven't, it'll be in the description below. Uh, how to get good tone, not sound jangly and, and yank, yankly on the guitar. That's a new word. Don't sound jangly or yankly on the guitar, but to get a good crisp tone. And the key to this is uh, learning how to play with dynamics and pick control and uh, learning how to listen a lot more than you play. I always tell my players when I'm producing in bands and, and training and stuff, listen 80%, play 20%. So you're gonna listen 80, play 20. When you get that down, so now let's say you're like, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't sound jangly, I've got good tone, I can play the chords, I'm going, now I'm in the band. Now, everything changes when you get up on the stage. So whether you're using in-ear monitors or floor monitors or whether you have no monitors, um, you plug your guitar in and then everything changes. So I'm going to give you some tips to, um, to get over that and to get better on stage. First of all, if you can't hear yourself on stage, fundamentally it's very hard to play without being jangly uh, because you're trying to hear yourself. You're trying to hear what you're playing and so you tend to play louder or even dig in more when you're really supposed to just be giving it a light strum. Um, so Try to hear yourself, whether you have a floor monitor, whether you have a um, in-ear monitors are really the best, especially for the guitar players. But if, if you are able to hear yourself and you're just playing lightly like this, you know, you're playing lightly, but in the loudspeakers, what happens when you can play with good, clean tone, like I said before, the sound guys can turn your guitar way up in the mix and it sounds good. If you're going like, that sounds like total junk coming through the mains. So if you're able to do, uh, if you're supposed to have a guitar part and it's like that, you, instead of going, you should go. So it sounds a lot cleaner, same rhythm, same, same, same tempo, you're just not digging into the guitar. You're letting the guitar tone sing out. And uh, if you didn't watch that video, just check the link below. Um, I go into some details on how to do that and just how to hold the pick. But now we're talking about being able to hear yourself. So keep your guitar turned up fairly, fairly, fairly good. You want that, that tone. When you start, here's the problem. When you start beating on the guitar and getting jangly, the sound guy immediately goes, oh, and he's like, turns the guitar down. So now it's even lower and now you're trying to play even harder. So what I always tell my guys and what I try to do is produce a consistently good tone at a medium volume and then they start turning you up so they can hear you and then when you play your guitar like that little bit of a strum coming out through the speakers sounds like you know like huge guitar instead of uh, you know if you go like hey everybody you know and it's so loud they turn it down then the guitar loses its body when you turn it down and you beat on it then it's losing body and tone so that's kind of the key you have to be able to hear yourself so if you're using a wedge monitor, turn your wedge monitor way up. Turn your guitar way up in your wedge, and then you just play softly. And then you can you can play softly, and it'll all come through. Then when you go to finger pick or pick, all those things begin to jump into the mix or jump out of the mix in a good way with good tone. If you're playing like really beating on the guitar, and then you got a soft part, and you're going to start picking. Usually your guitar is already turned down in the mix because it jangled up the mix and now you can't hear your guitar. So uh, get work, you got to work with your sound guys, work with your tone, and from the beginning you want to do that. If you are a jangly, jangly beat the guitar uh, strummer kind of player, they're already going to have you down. And so if you have to start from the louder volume. Start with your sound guys. Hey, turn my guitar up today. I'm going to play a little bit softer. I'm not gonna have as much, you know, I'm not gonna play as hard, so I want you to be able to hear me, so you're gonna have to turn me up. And then, um, in your ear monitors or floor monitors, turn yourself up pretty good, and then just play, um, because now you've already learned your pick control, so now you can kind of play softer, and then you'll have a much better tone. This is a battle, like you can see, that if you're kind of in the jangly uh, beat on the guitar mode now, you're gonna have to change not only the way you play, but you're gonna have to change the way your mixing, uh, your your mixer is mixing you. You might even have to change the EQ a bit. You might get some more body, some more low end out of the guitar, and some more some more of the beautiful tone of an acoustic. Uh, so just if you start getting excited 
on stage and it's a big build, that doesn't mean that you have to beat the guitar. You gotta keep your you gotta keep your dynamics as you're going and it's getting more dynamic and it's building. You can give a little bit more, dig in a little bit more, but you gotta realize that when you do that, you're getting louder in the house, you're getting louder in the mix. Uh, so you can actually control your dynamics once you're at this position, once you're at this place, you can control the dynamics a lot more. So when the guitar is up there and it's got good tone and you're playing it mostly a medium t uh, medium volume most of the time, when you want to build, you can give a little build and then it's not going to be jangly. You're never going to get to jangly. Don't get to the jangly, yangly tone of an acoustic by beating on it or holding your pick real tight. Hey. I'd like to invite you to join me if you like this discussion on my Facebook page and at worshipthekeng.com. You're always invited to become an online student and to download some of my free resources from the store. Um, also, give me a thumbs up, like, and share this video, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and also, share it with your friends. Your worship, If you're a worship leader, uh, many of the worship leaders I'm talking to right now all struggle with this same, same kind of thing. The guitar players are kind of beating on the guitars, mixing. It's, it's, it's a... It's a listen, it's a problem overall with most all you know, church bands and musicians. It's, it's just, we've got to learn to play the guitar with good tone and then turn it up in the mix and let it be blended in. That is, that is the key. And then the guitar becomes a key, a huge key element of the mix. Um, if you want to not be heard, if you want to uh, you know, get turned down a lot or um, whatever, then just beat the guitar to death and then the, the sound guy most likely is gonna be turning you down because it's just so harsh coming through the speakers that it doesn't really work in the mix. All right, guys, go to worshipthekeng.com and, and you know, check it out and let me know your questions your, your, your about this topic, whether you're a worship leader or a guitar player, and I'll, I'll dig into it topic even more. God bless you guys.